Trump's attorney slams the five Jessica Talov on Supreme Court's ruling. It's gonna be an interesting one. Doug in exile always kills it, so I'm ready to hear this one. Let's get to it. It's a tale of two worlds. That is, the Democrats are trying to describe reality in one way, and it's a lie, and the Republicans slash conservatives are trying to describe it in another way, and it's the truth. Let's get to this uh, <laughs> disagreement between Alina Haba and Jessica Tal So the right is always right, and the left is always wrong. And it's the truth. Let's get to this uh, disagreement between Alina Haba and Jessica Tarloff. They're not even on the same show, but they're talking two different languages. First, we're going to start with Alina Haba. They're weighing in on the Supreme Court case, but really it has to do with all politics everywhere. Welcome to Doug in Exile. I'm Doug Tenaple. This is where the happy patriots are because we live in reality. We agree with the, the nine to zero Supreme Court. All nine justices agree with us. And the lunatics on the other side, well, <laughs> they want Biden to be president again. Imagine crying because the Constitution is standing strong and we're not going to turn into Cuba. That's Trump derangement syndrome 101 right there. The Democrats want to turn us into Cuba. That is, they want to remove his name from the ballot. They're all OK with it. Remember that. We're going to keep going with this show. But who Democrats even brought up not that? oppose this decision. Why would anybody think of that as a tool? Like, doesn't it? It should be understood at this point that using that right now means it can be referred to in the future. You can't use it as a tool right now. What if the Republicans in the future now want to use that tool against the Democrats? Would you like it? If you wouldn't like it, why do it now? So... I, I kind of like think the Supreme Court ruling was was spot on, you know, regardless of um, support for Trump or no support for Trump. I just think ending it or cutting curtailing those excesses was right. So it's not referenced in the future and it doesn't, you know, it does, it's not detrimental to the American laws. The show, the Democrats did not oppose this decision until the Supreme Court came out against it. The rest of us who are constitutionalists we're against it. That is, we wanted Trump's name on the ballot in Colorado before the decision came out. We're so upset because the Constitution was upheld today, because the Supreme Court showed us that we are not Cuba, we are not a third world country, we are not a banana republic, and that the things I've seen over the past four months in New York are not going to become America. Oh yes, the things that she saw in New York with Letitia James and Eugene Carroll, um, New York is like Cuba. It does not have justice with its justices. The things that she saw there, it is not going to happen in the rest of America. But it, it's already happened in New York. Well, I think that the Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, from Colorado was actually way further out, what do you say, over your skis? Um, than out the over, her, skis, out yes. over <laughs> her skis than the average Democrat who, even if they thought that there was merit to the decision from the Colorado Supreme Court, still would have rathered he be on the ballot because of what that portends for the future. The only problem, Jessica Tarlov, is no Democrats came out and said it. They may have wanted Trump on the ballot and they may have disagreed with Colorado taking his name off the ballot, but none of them verbalized it. In fact, they've been online right now verbalizing the opposite about how Trump can get taken off the ballot. Jamie Raskin, major Democrats are for punishing political opponents. And what does MSNBC, The View, and CNN do? They have tantrums. It's literally <laughs> epic to watch. Uh, that's why we cover The View, guys. MSNBC and The View, those are our favorite shows to make. Yeah. Many of you hate <laughs> them. Shows. I don't know if you guys have seen his reviews on MSNBC and The View. When he says our favorite shows, <laughs> he means it. He means it. <laughs> MSNBC and The View, those are our favorite shows to right. make. I know many of you hate them. That is not why I make them. So you have something to hate. I make them because they represent the left side of America. And they must be mocked and destroyed because they think they're being uh, good little freedom fighters in removing Trump's name from the ballot. That there would definitely have been... I don't want to say another January 6th, but a lot of people who would claim, well, we didn't even get a chance mm -hmm. to exercise our constitutional rights. So they could, two things could be true. We think this is the appropriate decision, but we would rather his name be there. And you heard that a lot, especially when the main decision was coming down, because that was unilateral. No, but Jessica Tarloff, 
they did not say they preferred Trump's name on the ballot. Democrats across the board, we did not hear it. It's nowhere. It's not in the country. It's not in our press. It's not in our media. They did not all say, oh, that Colorado taking his name off the ballot. You know, we really have to have Trump's name on the ballot. Name the Democrat that said it. I mean, Biden wouldn't even say it. Yeah, I didn't hear None it of too. them said it. No didn't even respond even when Donald Trump was saying they were weaponizing the justice system and that shouldn't be happening. They should have responded to say, we want you on the ballot, but they didn't say that. But deep down inside, they wanted to win by removing Trump's name from the ballot. But we did say this is a clean cut Supreme Court decision. It's constitutional. They were trying to do something that would have been hurtful to Democrats and Republicans. And that's what people need to remember. It's about America first. It's not about Trump. It's about us. That's my warning to Democrats. This would hurt you also mm -hmm. in the long run. Some people think like, oh, as long as the p power, the evil power agrees with me, and they protect me, I will go along with the evil power. I, I'll, I'll agree with them. By the way, this is to my black community. You've heard this for years from Democrats. Like, just join us and, and let us do a few illegal things and we'll protect you. And so they knew to vote as a block. Look, all we know is we have to vote for a block for these Democrats. They're going to give us free goodies, free benefits. They're going to attack all the right people and defend all of us even though it breaks every principle in the Constitution and what Martin Luther King Jr. said. And then suddenly come the Hispanics coming over the southern border and they're like to the uh, black supporters, you're going under, forgotten, gone. You're getting replaced. We have a new favorite group. Another favorite group is mm -hmm. the trans community. They're going, hey, y'all, see you later. We got Oh, uh, it's looking like that is being replaced now by the migrants, the illegal migrants. Trans people now. Goodbye, black community. Thanks for getting us here. We were always just kidding. <laughs> Same thing with the Jews. The Jews vote for Democrats as a block. And how are the Jews feeling now with Hamas? Now, you tell me how you feel because you supported the Democrats. Now the Democrats are going, we demand a ceasefire. We demand a change. We demand all this stuff. And it's because you sacrificed your principles to vote for the Democrats as a block. You turned your brain off and you turned your values off and that is done. I'm not saying you have to vote for a Republican. You should. <laughs> we care more about you and your principles than the Democrats did. But I wanted to just add a couple of things um, to the judge's analysis. So the insurrection clause doesn't say who decides the who's an insurrectionist. And the Supreme Court was unified in the 9-0 that he should stay on the Colorado ballot but they're actually within that decision. No, it's not true that the four, the dissent, that is the, the females who said, ah, he didn't, they didn't exactly decide on insurrection, uh, but they still, it's still a nine zero vote. They still agreed to leave Trump's name on color. And basically it, they said if they, if there was an insurrection, that it didn't apply to Trump. That's what's going to happen. And now you're going to have the loony uh, liberals like Jamie Raskin, still try to get Congress together to take Trump's name off the ballot. But at least Congress is where it should happen. Congress is where this belongs, not the Colorado Supreme Court that's removing his name from the ballot. The Congress is supposed to tell you if Trump is to be charged with an insurrection. Trump has never been charged with insurrection, by the way. That's another thing. Never been charged. I heard Raskin, the congressman. Um, I think Wayne Banks Jill Weinbanks, yeah, she said you don't have to be charged with an insurrection to be guilty. That you need to, they just need to establish that you were involved with it. And that's why it was right for Trump to, for Trump's name to be taken out of the ballot. That he was, it was, it was established that Trump was involved or was engaged. I think that, I think she used the word engaged. If you're engaged with it, then they can take your name out of it, which, to me, I, I didn't think that was valid, but, you know, she's the lawyer, right? She's the one with the knowledge, I guess. Democrat today say he's got some rascally plan to go back to Congress and yeah. determine that Trump's an insurrectionist. So even if he does win in November, Donald Trump, Congress could bar him from taking office. What's going on here? <laughs> OK, so at least that happens in the Congress. That's at least Jamie Raskin and the Democrats going hey, we're going to bar him from the ballot, you know, from Congress because he's we're going to charge him with insurrection. That's the one thing they won't do. That's also the one thing that uh, Jack Smith wouldn't do. He'd have a chance in all of these cases with Chutkin, with all this going into the Supreme Court. 
if he just charged Trump with insurrection. He won't do it. He knows he won't win. He knows Trump didn't uh, perform an insurrection the way that they were warning about at the Civil War when the southern states tried to leave the the United States. That's an insurrection. There were the five conservatives who said that Congress is who decides. And Jamie Raskin has already talked about the fact that they're reviving a bill mm -hmm. to have him barred because of it being an insurrectionist. Which is but a then, huge waste of time. Yes. Potentially. I'm just saying that that's mm -hmm. huge waste of time. And Trump will only win more Jessica Tarloff. It's not going to work. Hey, why don't we also spy on his election for 2024 and then act like it didn't happen? I mean, it's what they're always doing. They double down, they triple down, and they become desperate. I'm not sure where their PR people are, but they should take a look at the polls. What they're doing is not working. And what President Trump said today was so articulate and so on point. He was calm, he was measured, and he said it very clearly. President and the thing is, I saw the script I bring to the channel, sorry, the speech. He didn't script it. He was very articulate, but he didn't even script it. He was just being real. I think that's the advantage or whether you like Trump or not, but that's what you get. That's the, the good side of what you get with him being president. The ability to communicate and be understandable without having to, you know, follow any rules or written script by somebody he, you know, you know, I don't like when presidents, basically what I'm saying, I don't like when presidents just come with a script and give you lies or cloak information in scripts. Trump is quite... He's very vocal, you know, he'll let you know what he thinks. And he did that very well after the ruling. Biden, do your job. Stop attacking me. Fight fair and square. That's the one thing the Democrats do not want is they do not want a fair fight. They don't want an election to decide who's going to win. That's the, and that's why they have to tell you that Republicans are trying to stop an election. That was never true. They're trying to tell you that Trump was an insurrectionist. That was also never true, never happened. And all the J6 protesters, none of them were insurrectionists. You've mm -hmm. got to take your henchmen off of me, your witch hunts, your election. And this thing is not looking good. I think it was Putin who made reference to that. It's like these people went to your White House peacefully. I think it was Putin went to your White House peacefully, but you threw them in jail. What do you think of that? Are you a killer? I think Putin asked one of the, I, th I just saw that clip on, on TikTok, Putin asked an interviewer, are you a killer that your people went to the White House or did this peacefully, but you threw them in jail? So go fix that before you talk to me. I mean, he didn't say it in that way, but that's what I perceive. It's kind of like saying, before you can accuse me of anything, you fix that. So it's not a good rep representation or good image in America. You've got to take your henchmen off of me, your witch hunts, your election interference cases. And if you can walk, walk your way to the ballot in 2024 and vote. <laughs> but walk. he is not able to do so. And that's the truth. So the desperation, as we're seeing with what they said today, going to Congress, it just, you know, they double down, they triple down. Tomorrow we'll hear more of it. That's Elena Hava, Trump's lawyer. I couldn't have said mm. it better, guys. Yeah, that was another very good video by dog in exile i'll put a link to his channel in the description so you can always go check him out but i i'll end the video right there pretty interesting a lot of things happening with trump again like i said if trump had has done something criminal or something illegal you know sue him throw him in jail for that you know what he has really done when I mean, you keep saying trump has done everything and you can't prove anything it becomes vague to the people and the people now believe all oh, what you're saying are just lies because you can't prove what he's actually done but you're accusing him of everything we can't believe you anymore because if he's done something well just throw him in jail already you know he has to be accountable for what he's done but if he hasn't done it stop accusing him and it really does feel like weaponization of justice and you know people don't like that people don't like to be lied to and that's why you see when you bring up another case, people are like, oh, we support Trump even more now. You bring up another one, we support Trump even more now. Because people don't like lies. Smash that like button, subscribe, share your thoughts, and, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.